Hello there. Today we're going to talk about the special mixer layer that I mentioned in the last video. I've actually recorded this video in the past, but it was embedded into longer videos and it took a while to get to the topic. So today we're going to just record a quick video to show you how to build that special mixer layer. I actually have mine in an action and um, at the end of this video I will um, provide you that action. You can either build one yourself or you can just download the action that I provided. The beauty of this mixer layer is that you can um, use it uh, with the mixer brush and keep the sample all layers up here at the top of your toolbar. You can keep that turned off which helps the performance of your brushes especially if you're using uh, a machine that doesn't have a lot of RAM in it or an older processor because the mixer brush really really does slow down um, as you're trying to paint. So let's get started today and I'll show you how to build that mixer layer. What I have today here is um, a hyena that I'm getting ready to paint and the only thing that I have is I have um, a copy of the background that he was on that I've kind of done a mixer on and then I have his cutout. So the um, action or the, or the process that I'm going to show you today, you need to run that on a single layer, the single layer that the cutout is on. And um, the first thing that you do is that you make a copy of that layer. Uh, Control J or Command J, make a duplicate copy of the layer. The original of the cutout, we're going to turn that off and hide him. We don't need him right now. He's your source layer. Um, the, then we're going to put a, a blank layer over the top of our copy. And we're going to name that blank layer uh, Mixer 1%. That's where the, the magic layer is going to end up. Uh, on the copy, uh, we're going to take and we're going to set the opacity of that copy to 1% opacity. Now, if you look at your canvas, it, you say, well, I, I have nothing on my canvas. Well, actually, this blank layer has 1% of that image embedded into it, but it's so light that you actually cannot see it. If I were to duplicate that layer a hundred times, your image would actually come back because there is 1% of that image in there. The top layer is a blank canvas at normal 100%. There is absolutely nothing on that layer. But here's the, here's the process. Grab both of those layers, the 1% blank layer, the, or the 100% blank layer and the 1% of your image, and you wanna merge those two images together with a control E. That's the magic layer. That, is, that process, that simple step of merging those two layers together builds that magic 1% mixer layer. Now we can turn the source layer back on again and if we reduce the opacity of him down so that we just can use him as a reference I like to turn on the lock painting so I don't accidentally paint on my source layer. Go to that magic mixer layer and grab a mixer brush. I have a fur brush right here. And as we paint, you can see that all of those pixels that were in that original image are actually there on that blank layer. And as you can see up on the toolbar, sample all layers is still turned off. I'm painting on what seems like a totally blank layer. I am not sampling that image from below. If I turn it off, I can still paint on that seemingly blank layer. I'm only using the source layer as a reference to show me where to paint and what direction to paint the fur but I can paint with a mixer, sample all layers is off, and all of my image is embedded into that blank layer. Now another little trick to make it easy to see that reference layer is I often put a solid color layer 
bright colored, like maybe a bright pink, underneath my image. And that way, while I'm painting, let me zoom in here a little bit, while I'm painting on my mixer layer, I can very easily tell what I've finished and what still needs to be painted because I have that tint of that color on my reference or my source layer and then I don't have to get confused about what have I painted and what have I not painted yet because I have that bright pink color showing through and when I'm finished with my mixer painting I can just throw that color fill layer away. It's only there to assist me with my painting. And the beauty of this process is that because I'm on, I have my sample all layers turned off, I am not going to pick up any of those pink pixels in my painting. If I were to use the traditional mixer brush with sample all layers, I could not use this pink layer to help me visualize what is painted and what's not painted because if I sampled all layers and then started painting let me demonstrate if I were to turn on sample all layers and start painting I would now have not only would it be extremely slow as you see right there how slow the brush goes I have all this pink now on my palette. So we definitely don't want to, let me back up a few steps. We definitely do not, with this technique, want to turn on sample all layers. With this technique, turn off sample all layers. Your brush will flow through your painting process and you get the benefit of having this reference layer on to help you visualize your painting. I hope that was helpful.